Today I have an iPhone 11 that does not have Face ID. There's a message when you go in to set up your Face ID that the TrueDepth camera isn't working. And Canly has come out with a new board that attaches to their iCopy Plus tool. Up to this point, we've been able to use the iCopy Plus for the batteries, the screens, verifying a genuine cable. Now we have the ability to use that same tool for the dot projector repairs for this particular instance where we have the TrueDip camera failure. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the step-by-step -step process of setting everything up, verifying that everything works, and actually going through an actual repair and show you the process from start to finish. Let's get into the video. All right, let's connect the new logic board for the Face ID repairs to our iCopy Plus 2.2. Just snaps right in. And here I have an iPhone 11. If we go into the settings and look at the Face ID, we have a message at the top saying a problem was detected with true depth camera and everything's grayed out. So this Face ID has been disabled. Let's turn off the phone, take out the bottom screws and lift up that screen. Pop it up. And lift the screen all the way off. Take out the brackets. Disconnect the display after disconnecting the battery and the proximity sensor and the screen is off. Let's take out the bracket that covers up the camera. The bracket. Disconnect the rear camera assembly and take it out. Disconnect the front facing camera assembly. So we're gonna connect to the computer. This will give power to it. And then we have a, a power supply that we're gonna be connecting up top here for the activation portion of, of, the, of the repair. We need to start our software. All right, so I'm not getting the proper reading, so I think we have to go online and update the software for this new tool. So here on Quanli's website, we'll go to the downloads and click the download on the newest uh, uh, firmware for the, the iCopy Plus. I'm going to take that into uh, WinRAR and extract that file. Once I have it extracted, the device will search for it. We're going to find the cable that's specifically the dot projector. This one right here. And we'll connect it up to our reader there. Put the phone basically back together and we'll also plug the phone into the computer as well. So both of these are plugged into the computer for the uh, program to run. Now we will trust the computer. All right, so it's updating by itself. There we go. Now it's prepped for it. All right, we can see here, we got an iPhone 11 with the abnormal readings. Hit read. There we go. Switching it to English, just go to the main page and double click. All right, let's power it back on. And we'll restart the program. And when we go into the lattice, we can detect the chip. And there we go. We got the IC fusing on the iPhone 11 with the abnormalities. Now we go to Cloud Backup, and it says Successful. 
All right, for the next step, we do need to connect the this power supply. So now we just need to activate the dot projector. We click activation. What's actually happening here is the power supply is physically fusing the component. You can see it says uh, activating the dot matrix. Please be patient. It's physically fusing the uh, the MOSFET inside the dot projector. Activation successful. All right, now that it's been activated, we can disconnect the dot projector. We'll get our new Tagon ID face flex cable for the iPhone 11 in this case. There we go. All right, we'll hit cloud burning. We'll select the most recent file. I'll double check the most recent file. Hit burn. And it'll go through its process and it's successful. So now we have write successful on the computer and on the programmer here. So we will disconnect. And this is how we're gonna connect up the, the new dot projector tag on is like this. And this folds down like so putting it back in the position that it wasn't before basically and let's install this back in the phone all right so here for the iphone 10 we fold over the flex cable like this to connect it the iphone 10s is very similar as well so we can connect the tag on flex get a little bit different here with the 10r the positions of those flexes the 10s max very similar as well just folding it right over Getting into the 11, it's fairly similar. Now we get a little bit more extra folding in the 11 Pro. The 11 Pro Max is similar to the 11 Pro. And the 12 Pro is probably one of my favorites. It's almost like origami. We're doing quite a bit of folding here to get it in alignment so it all fits inside the phone. And same for the 12 Pro. A little bit of extra folding here on both cables. With the 12 Mini and the 12 Pro Max, another origami fold to make everything work properly. Boom. All right, the tag on does slide down right in between the battery there. You should be able to line it up nicely and click it in now. And we can reconnect. Put back in the rear camera assembly. So what I'm running into now is the physical gap. I need to, to make it a little bit bigger. Now this battery has been replaced before, so I should be able to put a little bit of isopropyl alcohol under it and slide it over. But if that's not the case, then you'll have to pull the tabs out or the room of the battery so that you can slide the battery over to the other side so that it leaves enough clearance and that would actually make the tag on flex fit even better. Let's just take some isopropyl alcohol, see if we can't get that battery to, to slide. Now I can move that out of the way there. Now we got plenty of room. Slide back in our proximity sensor assembly and connect it back up. Let's plug in the display, plug in the battery. You can see this battery has the tag on flex as well. All right, everything is reconnected. We just have brackets to put back, but let's test it out. See if we can get it to work. All right, now we've got a blue face ID, no more message. Let's see what happens. Let me try to set it up. Oh, and let's just move the screen out of the way for a second and see. There we go. Just gonna put back the brackets and we should be good to go. All right, let's close this guy up now. Now that we've got all the brackets back.
Make sure it works through the screen. Stills blue. And yeah, it's gonna work just fine. It's really cool to see a, a company take advantage of a, a tool that they've made for other other repairs and utilize it. That way we don't have repairs for or machines for each one of the things that we need to repair in the industry. So this is this is nice to be able to use the the uh, iCopy uh, Plus tool, uh, not only for the displays and batteries. Um, but also for the dot projector for recovering face ID. As you've just seen, all fixed, working again, reading the face. I'm excited to be able to use this tool that I use on the day-to-day -day for the uh, face ID repairs as well. The repair will go smoothly as long as you follow the order of operations that I went through in this video. I'll link this tool in the description below. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.